With just one week to go until the brand new start of the 2024-25 championship campaign and as a Burnley fan I'm looking forward to winning at least more than five games this season, Scott Parker's Clarets have got some questions to answer. Number one is looking at the squad that still at this stage looks rather bloated for the season ahead. Who could still be going out and which interest could still be roaming around a few of these players? And number two, who can we see being our main starting 11 for the upcoming game against Luton Town on a Monday night down London on the 12th of August? Well, pre-season has appeared to look pretty decent as far as we're aware, which by the way, most games have been behind closed doors where they have all been, but really no information has come out of really any of them other than little drops on social media. We've got, I believe, a 3-0 win against Barnsley or 4-0. It was definitely a win against Barnsley. A win against Newcastle United from what we can see and also another win against Hearts, but not really too much more has really come out of that. With, again, a lot of players here that we are still kind of on the edge thinking well are they still going to be here or not those obvious players are the likes of James Trafford, Zeki Amdouni, um, Sander Berg, Wilson Alderbert there's so many players that you are kind of expecting would probably make a move there's been some links to the likes of Esteve and also Mike Trezor as far as we're aware is not even at preseason training so he will obviously be making a move as well so Right now, our squad is still rather large, and there is some potential transfers that we could still make. As far as we're aware, a goalkeeper is still a, a, an area that we want to look at, which may lean to the idea that Trafford will be departing this summer. And the main key link in the last 24 hours, which has been Tommy Conway from Bristol City, in a somewhat swap deal with some cash involving Scott Twine and Luke McNally, which I think people would accept that. Um, Scott Twine, I think, is a player that can offer something, a moment of magic, as we saw that in our last championship campaign, his free kick against West Brom being the main bunch, and I feel like he's still got something to offer, and I still, I don't really want to give up on him. However, Tommy Conway does also look like a decent prospect, and if that can help us get over the line, then it can be all well. Looking at the current squad now and what we've got here, we've got a, well, if you look at the defence, especially at centre backs, we are completely stacked still. So many centre halves here, you would expect to be, you know, still maybe linked to a few lower end Premier League teams. However, they are still all here, and other than Esteve, they all look like they are here to stay. So, that's good news for everyone involved. And in terms of hopes and aspirations for the season, you can't help but look at the other teams in the league. And in terms of last season, I would fairly say quite confidently that the, the quality has got worse this season than what it did last year. I think the likes of Leeds will get a little bit weaker because the players that shone for them will also be, be moving on. Um, Archie Gray's got to Spurs and it looks like Somerville is also going to West Ham and you may expect maybe one more big um, signing to go away as well. If it's, um, if it's Gononto or if it's um, um, Rutter, we'll have to find out. But in terms of other competitors, you've got Luton Town, which they are a very... Um, almost Sean Dyche kind of style of team. You know, they're they're a unit. They are a, they're a team. They're a squad with not too many real like star names. However, they will always pluck at results and they will always get it over the line. And I, I we expect them to have a pretty good campaign, despite one or two players leaving and maybe a few concerns over a few players. Maybe also going in the summer. They should be also quite a competitive outfit. Sheffield United may be a bigger concern, no? From what we can see, 16 players have left this summer and a lot of big players too. They have made some good signings, the likes of Kiefer Moore and also O'Hare. However, it looks like they still need a lot more help, especially defensively, to really consider them being a real competitive, uh, a competitive outfit for the rest of the campaign. So, in terms of our competitors... It's really hard to not look stupid and to not look biased here, but realistically, Burnley this season with our current squad the way that it is, and even if three or so players, two, three, four players 
end up being sold in this summer. So the likes of a Sander Berg or Wilson Alderbert or James Trafford or Zeki Amdouni, you know, two or three of them. I still believe that our squad is more than capable of winning a league or going top two. Now, realistically, I don't want to be biased here. I really don't. But anything other than top six this season is a failure like it is an absolute failure and now that the kind of initial maybe pushback of the um, signing of Scott Parker has now calmed down I think people have now warmed to him a, a, a quite a bit in terms of what we see online it's always easy to make everything su sunshine and rainbows on social media pre-season and it's hard to really make it look bad, especially when we're not seeing any highlights of the games whatsoever. But I think people are now warming up to him because it looks all unhappy. All the videos we're seeing in pre-season, everyone's smiling. It's not really that hard to really impress fans as it really shouldn't. We just want to see the, the players together. We want to see them happy and looking like they're ready for the new season. And it looks that way. So... We don't know much about tactics. We still believe it should be a 4-2-3-1, similar to a Vincent Company team in terms of the he does want to pass out from the back and be quite patient in that regard. However, it looks like he is a bit more varied in his approach where he wants a bit more directness um, in terms of actually getting the ball up to somewhat of a big man. So the likes of a Otonji could maybe be that man or maybe Lyle Foster as he did do that quite a bit in our Premier League campaign. However, on paper, when you look at our team here, there's so many great players compared to the um, quality in comparison to most of the league here. I mean, in terms of the midfield, a Josh Cullen and Sanderberg midfield for the championship sounds really unfair. And then attacking-wise, we could have Kolyosh on the left with on the right being a Manuel Benson as a number 10 could be Wilson or the Burt and as a number 9 could be the likes of Elio Foster or as of right now, Zeki Amdouni. Like, again, the Premier League, it didn't work out for Burnley, of course, and we will hopefully learn from our mistakes. But you can't help but get carried away and thinking that forward line, that midfield, our current defence in the championship should be a force. I mean, defensively, you can pick any of of, of, of uh, Jordan Bayer or Esteve or O'Shea or Aldekiel or... Ekdal, I mean, people forget about Ekdal. There's also the likes of Del Quad that's in there, McNally. McNally, right now, if you look on social media, is being fla uh, flaunted by so many championship fans, Middlesbrough fans and Coventry fans and Bristol City fans and the like. So many fans are begging for Luke McNally, who for us, if we're being honest here, is still our fifth or sixth for maybe even seventh choice centre half. So we need to kind of realise in many areas how lucky we really are. As a right back, we've got the likes of Robert still here, and it looks like he's staying. And um, Sambo is a new recruit as well. And of course, there's also Vitinho on the left-hand side, left back. We, uh, we still look a little bit weak in that regard. We've got, of course, Perez, our Brazilian left back from Santos that can go in that spot. And it looks like we're still, you know, with Taylor now going... We do look a bit prone there, but we can maybe get away with playing Vettino as a left back if needed. That has been done before. Or maybe Owen Dodson. Maybe he could be and uh, maybe a plan for the left back spot this campaign. And then goalkeeper, we still got Trafford or Halatki is a new recruit. I do expect Trafford to go in this summer. I'd be surprised if he's still here. And if he is here, it's due to a lack of a realistically a decent offer that we do receive from a club. But Halaski, if he is our main number, main number one, I don't think anyone will have any complaints, which he just had a great campaign for Ipswich last season that also got promoted to Premier League. So if you look at our squad, it is really stacked. And even if two or three players are no longer there, or even four, you would still believe our team is still pretty stacked with depth everywhere other than maybe left back. Attacking wise, if it's Kolyosho or Zaruri or Benson, we've still got Aaron Ramsey to come back at Christmas because he's still injured. Nathan Redmond is still here, by the way. You know, Scott Twine is a number 10. We've still got Brownhill about. Will Brownhill be going back into his number 10 spot as he did back in the championship? And he did win the championship. Uh, well, he was in the, player, uh, the team of the season, not play the season. Um, but 
where's Brownell going to fit in this team? You know, will it be a, a 4-2-3-1 or will it be a 4-3-3? It's going to be really hard to fit all these players in. But depth-wise, we are absolutely stacked. And there's also Johan berg I can't forget about him as well. You know, I, I, I'm sure there's also two or three others that I'm forgetting about here. For number nine right now, it's Seki Amduni, Jay Rodriguez, Lyle Foster and Hutonji as our main four strikers. Now, if T Tommy Conway comes in, you would think that potentially is Eki Amduni may be going out as he is quite a talent and he does have some decent resale value. So that's kind of where we're at right now with one week left to go. I do expect three outgoings that are relatively large, but we should recruit a good amount of money in. If it is the likes of an Esteve, because it appears he may have some interest, I wouldn't really cry about it. It'd be annoying because I do think he should be a starter. For my ideal pairing, I would say probably Esteve and Jordan Bayer, if they are both fit or if everyone's fit. However, we should be more than happy with an O'Shea or an Ekdal going in that spot as well if needed. And we'll probably do a starting 11 for the Luton Town game with the entire gang when it comes to that point. But as of right now, it is hard to not get carried away. It's hard to not get excited. It, you know, only this time, two years ago, we already played Huddersfield Town in that away game, the first game of that Vincent Company season. It feels that like we're waiting for the inevitable here. And we will get our first real sight of the team tomorrow against Cadiz as they're currently over in Spain for pre-season. So right now, all good vibes, all good feeling towards a group. And I can't help but, kept, but get carried away thinking that we look very strong. Leeds are losing Somerville. They've lost Archie Gray. They do have a lot of money as well now because of that. So they may bring in two, three players because of it and to stack up areas of their team. But I can't help but feel really optimistic. And I hope you guys are as well. So that's my thoughts for the upcoming season. Prediction-wise, as of right now, it's hard to not think that top two should be the main focus here. And probably the expectation... The expectation with this squad should be top two. With the depth of it, with the quality of it, even if three, four players go, we'll still have incredible depth all around. I'm confident. But you can never be too confident as Scott Parker, it's a new manager. We've got to wait and see. But I'm looking forward to that Monday night. Tell me your thoughts down below and I'll see you guys next time for probably the next podcast we do which could be on sunday so yeah upper colors lads